everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan and today is part 13, lucky 13 for our how to build a big block Chevrolet series. If you've missed the first 11 episodes of that, there's a link down below in the description to a big playlist here on YouTube. Now today's task is going to be getting the valve cover situated and the engine married to our transmission. It's a really big day, it's really exciting. Lots of big pieces are going into their homes and we are just that much closer to hearing this thing roar. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so let's start off today with our valve covers. These are the ones I have picked. Uh, I can't remember the exact make and model of them, but I like them because they were uh, built aluminum and they're anodized in this nice black and say Chevrolet, I wanted something a little more uh, classic looking. This is all down to personal preference though. There's a bunch of ones that are painted, chromed, dipped, whatever, you name it. Um, so this is more of a personal preference thing. The only thing I want to mention that is if you have roller rockers or stud girdles or something, you got to look out for how tall your valve covers are. So you got to make sure that your valve covers are going to fit whatever rockers you've selected. So I know these ones will fit my engine. Um, and then the next thing we need to do is install our valve cover seal here. Now what we're going to do, what we're going to do here is get some uh, carburetor spray on a terry towel here and then just go around this mating surface here we want to make sure there's no grease or assembly lube that we used to put the engine together or any kind of manufacturer's grease because that's going to inhibit the glue's ability to remain adhesive and then the next thing we're going to take a look at is our valve cover gaskets here uh, these are made by Felpro. They have a steel core. These are pretty high dollar ones. You can get away with the uh, you know ones made of cork or paper or whatever, but uh, why not spend the extra money and make sure you're not getting any leaks with these nice steel core ones. Uh, link down below in the description to these bad boys as well. All right, we're gonna take some of our spray adhesive we've been using throughout the build here and apply it to one side of our gasket. Then we're gonna go over our valve covers. Then we can sit down our valve cover gasket, making sure the three holes are on the top, the four holes are on the bottom. Set that down, lift it back up, set it down again. Make sure all the holes line up, and you gotta move quickly because the glue is a setting. And there we go, we just gotta do this to both of them. All right, now we can install our valve covers here, and there's no adhesive or anything on the head side of our gasket here. We just want that adhesive to be on the valve cover side so when we remove it, the gasket comes on with the valve cover if there's a problem. So we can install our bolt that came with, bolts that came with our valve covers here. Now if you want to, for a personal preference thing, to ensure you don't get any kind of leakage, uh, you can put a small film of silicone rubber between the gasket and the top of the cylinder head. And we can snug those bolts up. The way we're gonna tighten this is we're gonna start in the very middle and then go to these two lower, like think about a triangle like this. So we're gonna tighten those three up first. And we're just gonna do uh, lightly snug right now and then we're gonna go a uh, second pass a little bit firmer. Now that they're lightly snug, we're gonna do that exactly again, but a little bit firmer, and the torque spec's really gonna vary based off of head material, bolt material, and valve cover material. So you might wanna look that up if you want to, but honestly, just wrist tight is probably good. And here's also a nice advantage with our steel core gasket, is that steel core is really gonna stop uh, any kind of over tightening. I mean, you could probably Hulk tighten it into oblivion, but don't be afraid to go a little tighter if you have that steel core. That's the advantage you have when you buy a nice expensive gasket. So as I'm going around and tightening these, uh, they've become loose. So as I tighten it, the gasket is compressing and swedging out a little bit. Um, so just keep going around until the bolts no longer come loose. Like this is my fourth time tightening that one and it's loose again, so. We're just gonna keep tightening them until they stop becoming loose, and that's gonna ensure a good seal. There we go, that one's finally not loose, so we know that the gasket is fully compressed, 
and we're ready to go. Just do the same thing for the other side. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is our PCB valve. We got this one made by AC Delco. I can't recommend AC Delco enough. It is the OEM application for our big block Chevy. Um, and basically what the PCB valve does is take excess crankcase pressure, any kind of uh, excess vapors that aren't uh, correctly burned and reintroduced into the um, intake manifold to be burned. So nothing's wasted and that's controlled here by this valve. And this is AC Delco part number CV774C, link down below in the description. Now, the problem we've ran into is that our valve cover grommets are too big. So this won't sit in there, you know, and actually make a seal. It's, it's pretty close as you can see. So luckily our friends over at Moroso make these grommets, link down below in the description, that do work. So we can go ahead and remove this grommet here. It's pretty easy. Toss that aside. And then what we're gonna do is put our grommet, our replacement grommet in. Just, just like that, perfect. And then we can put our PCB valve in. And it should be pretty, pretty snug. It should be, you know, not impossible to put in, but difficult. There we go. And that's ready to be fed into the intake manifold. So here we are at the, uh, basically right over the number one cylinder. And this is going to be the one closest to you because this is not only our engine vent where excess pressure is let out or if air is needed to be put into the engine to prevent damage, uh, that's regulated with this breather. This is basically the engine vent. And this is also where you're gonna be adding engine oil. So you want it as close as possible to you when it's in the car or truck. So I have this one, again, it's a uh, personal preference on this. This is made by Chevrolet Performance, part number 141-754, link down below in the description. And I bought it because it's black and it matches my black valve covers, so. And I think it looks very snazzy. And this is gonna fight you a little bit, but you just gotta keep pushing it in. And there we go, just like that. Before we attempt to put this on the transmission, I want to go over putting your headers on. This is something you should do outside of the vehicle because you might run into some clearance issues, especially uh, I've seen them hit oil pans, but where uh, we ran into some problems, especially on this build was with the stud clearance to the header flange. We had to grind a little bit of material off there because our head bolts or ARP head bolts, they're the non-stock ones, and they're a little bit taller and a little bit more beefy. So um, we just had to grind that off with a angle grinder and uh, it was all good to go. But it is a good idea to go ahead and just test fit your headers on both sides to make sure that you're not gonna run into some clearance issues. And if you do, feel free to do what we did and grind a little bit off. So now we have our engine on our engine crane here with our load leveler installed. There's a couple different ways you can do that. You can do a carburetor bolt-on plate style. You could do a chain from the top of the cylinder head to the other side of the top of the cylinder head. But the load leveler is nice for convenience. You just take some bolts out of your intake manifold and make sure you secure it in four places. Don't, uh, don't skimp out now. This is the important part. You want to bolt it in four places. And uh, we have to do this now because uh, we need to put the flex plate or flywheel, depending on what transmission you have. And both of those go on the exact same way with the same torque spec. So let's go ahead and jump, jump into it. All right, so here's our Summit Racing flex plate, link down below in the description. Now I wanna go over my transmission guy, I actually marked that this is the rear, so this is gonna face the transmission. But if you didn't have that on there, how could you tell? Well, there's a little chamfered edge here and that needs to face towards your transmission. You can't have that facing towards the engine. The engine will be a completely flush surface. So uh, it has an alignment dowel there that gets on the back of the crank as well, and you just line that up. And it's a little, uh, it's a little bit of a press fit, so don't be afraid to, you know, use your fist and kind of hammer it on a little bit. And now we can grab our bolts. So I'm lucky enough to have a dowel right here at the end of my uh, index finger, but some crankshafts don't have a dowel. They have a pattern, uh, the bolt pattern is slightly different, so you'd have to line it up until all the bolt holes line up perfectly. Um, but we have a dowel in this situation, so we know we are correct. And that applies to both flex plates and flywheels. All right, the next part's pretty darn important. We have these special bolts here, and these are uh, special due to how shallow the head is and how big they are. Um, so you want to make sure you get the correct bolts for your flex plate or um, flywheel. So the other thing we need to do is apply some red Loctite here. This will ensure that the bolts don't fall out because that'd be really, really bad. So what we can do... Let's give this a good shake, which we've already done. 
apply some to our threads here and install that. There we go, we'll just do that for all six of these bad boys. All right, we're gonna take our 11 16 size socket and just snug these bad boys up in a star pattern. Then we can grab our torque wrench and we're gonna put it at 20 pounds and then 40 pounds and then 60 pounds. So we're going up at 20 foot pounds each time. Our final torque figure is 60 foot pounds. When it comes to uh, tightening this, you want to get a nice torque wrench here. We're going to set it at 20 foot pounds. And when you're tightening, you want to go up, which is kind of the opposite of the way you usually tighten. You usually tighten down, but in this case, the engine and gravity are going to be fighting us. So we're going to go ahead and tighten these up to 20 foot pounds. And of course, going in our star pattern. Now we can move up to 40 foot-pounds. And again, star pattern. And then finally move up to our 60 foot-pounds. And again, star pattern. And there we go. So this is what our setup looks like. We got our uh, 700R4, that's our chosen transmission for this application, on a nice little rolly cart, just so we can have our engine here on the hoist. Now, if you didn't have a rolly cart, you could also use a pallet of wood or something on the floor if you stacked it a little bit higher. That's also an option available to you, but uh, the rolly cart's a big help. So basically, you just want to get those two surfaces parallel with each other so you can move the transmission on and put the bell housing bolts in. So this might take a little bit of manhandling here. You just want to aim the big hole here onto this dowel and the same thing for the other side and then it's pretty much lined up. So this is the benefit of the rolly cart. It does some of the work for you. And then we can put our bell housing bolts in. You can put thread locker on these if you want. I don't recommend it. Some people do it. I'm not one of them. But we're just going to tighten these up. We're not going to torque them down just yet. Uh, before we go any further, I also want to bring up that uh, you want to make sure your torque converter is completely seated into the uh, front of the transmission. I have a great video on that. The link is down below in the description. Because if your torque converter isn't seated all the way uh, onto the, the transmission pump, and you force it by putting these bell housing bolts on, what happens is your torque converter will mash into that pump and you've just basically ruined your transmission. So we have all our bell housing bolts in except for this top right one. Uh, that is going to involve putting our transmission dipstick tube in. So let's go ahead and talk, tackle that. So this is our dipstick tube hole for our transmission. And you wanna go in there uh, with like a terry towel and some carburetor spray and make sure that's all clear of any kind of oil or debris. And then we're gonna grab our old friend silicone rubber apply some to our fingertip here and then our grommet we're just going to put a nice thin film of that all the way around the outside of it here not a lot just a little bit you don't want that getting in your transmission just like that and then we can insert that into that home there there we go that's perfect and then we want to do a similar thing to the outside of our dipstick tube and just put some silicone rubber on that as well. This will ensure a very good seal for years. And then we can insert our dipstick tube into the transmission. Walk that in, there we go, perfect. And that's in its home. All right, so uh, that's why we left that bolt out earlier on the bell housing. So our dipstick tube has a uh, bracket. 
And we can just tighten that up. And now we can grab our Torx pack. Uh, we put this in now because it's pretty tricky to get in once it's in a car, especially if it's in a small car like a Camaro. It's probably a little easier on a truck, but it's a lot easier just to do it now. You might make it hard on yourself. All right, our torque spec for today is 25 foot-pounds. So we're gonna go ahead and set our torque wrench to that. And we're gonna tighten in as much as a cross pattern as we can. So we'll start in the bottom left, we'll go up to our top right here. And then go to middle left, bottom right, top left, middle right. And we're good. And now we're ready to put this sucker in. Well, let's hold it right there because putting it in the car or truck is a whole different animal. So we'll save that one for next time. So that's how to handle your valve covers and transmission engine marriage. Uh, the way I did it is the way I like to do it outside of the vehicle. It's a little bit easier and stuff. Uh, but if you had your transmission already in your uh, car or truck and you just want to drop your engine down, the process is exactly the same. It's just a little bit trickier because you have a whole car or truck surrounding it, but you just want those surfaces nice and parallel so that way the dowels line up on the engine and transmission and they can marry together. And everything else I said also applies to you. Thank you so much for watching. If you like me or what I do here on this channel, you can consider uh, clicking that join button down below. Otherwise, please hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time.